Here's how I 3D kitbashed a scab gunner from Darktide. With Darktide just released, instead of letting my team down, I decided to do something I was good at. 3D kitbashing. A huge thanks to Rafe for the idea and the push to do this. First of all, if you wanted to make some stuff that would fit into Darktide with no kitbashing, the new Corrupted Guard from Station Forge are fantastic just straight up. I enjoy kitbashing though, so I changed it up and wanted to match this picture as close as possible. I liked the body of the flamer and the head of one of the hotshot gunner guys. I used Boolean differences on both pieces and some simple shapes to cut off the old head from the flamer and to isolate the head on the hotshot guy. I selected one of the cut-up models, went into edit mode, and with everything selected, pressed P. I chose separate by loose parts, and then I deleted the loose parts I didn't want. If you like good blender practices, I suggest looking away. I cleaned up the sharp edges hanging out of the head by going into sculpting mode and using the elastic deform tool to push the unwanted parts back into the body. This is sort of like kicking an ice cube under your refrigerator, but as always I'm open to tips on how to do this better. Next I brought in a hot shotgun from another station forge kit and moved it into place. Unfortunately the cable was clipping into the body. I fixed that by going into sculpting mode and using the masking tool to mask off areas I didn't want to be affected by the elastic deform tool. I went ahead and used the elastic deform tool to move the cable until it didn't look too weird. Also, the reference image had these cool spikes coming out of the shoulder pads. These were very easy to add. I imported a cone and reduce the number of sides by changing the number of sides in the little pop-up window that appears after you import. You have to first move the spike's origin point lower below center. If you don't move the origin point lower, the object that's snapping onto another object will snap to the center of the spike rather than where you really want it attached. I turned on the little snapping box, set it to snap to faces and snap with center and checked the Align Rotation to Target box. I moved the origin point lower on the spike so the center point isn't in the middle of the object. To do that, I went into Edit Mode and moved everything upwards. From there, I just copy and pasted more spikes. The gunner in the reference image has this cool backpack with a light on it. I brought in a backpack from Station Forge's junk bot kit and mirrored it so the light wasn't getting blocked by the gunner's hair. I exported the model as one piece and the digital kit bash was done. Now, on to painting. As always, I started with a zenithal highlight. I primed the mini with Pro Acryl Dark Neutral Gray and then sprayed from above with white. This makes details easier to see when painting and also gives a great base for glazing later. I also sprayed from beneath with a red ink. The red ink helps give the shadows a warm tint when glazing. Also, since white ink can be very delicate and I couldn't let it sit out overnight to get stronger, I sprayed on a matte varnish. After, I dry brushed with white to further strengthen the zenithal highlight. Now it's ready for paint. Finally! Then I base coated everything. I painted his coat with a glaze of Panzer Ace's dark rubber. I'm a huge fan of this color. 
But ironically, this color sort of has a rubbery consistency and needs to be thinned more than normal. I made the armor color by mixing metal color steel with black. I was worried I had too much on my brush, but I think it turned out fine. Then, I glazed black onto his pants. The pouches, boots, and gun stock were painted with burnt umber, and his gloves were painted with flat brown. His boot straps and mask were then painted with a thinned down skeleton horde contrast paint. I like using contrast paints for stuff that's sort of difficult to paint and see like the boot straps. If you paint out of the lines, it just acts like a wash and goes into the recesses around it. The hair was painted with the mix between dark rubber and model color buff. The reference image has these cool red markings on the armor. I used flat red and painted the stripes onto his shoulder pads and painted half of his chest plate. I didn't worry too much about making it look clean since it's supposed to be weathered. I then went around the mini and painted random metal bits with metal color steel. I added a hazard stripe to his gun like in the picture. I started with a few layers of Averland Sunset, then drew in stripes with black. You don't have to get it perfect with your first attempt and can keep tweaking it as you see fit. I'm decently happy with how this turned out for me. Next, I painted everything that was going to be glowy with white, and added a white stripe down the center of his helmet. I cleaned the line up later on. I did a coat of matte varnish, and then did an all-over oil wash. It was made with two parts black to one part brown oil paint, mixed in some white mineral spirits. I covered the whole mini, let it sit for about a minute or two, and then used a clean brush to wipe away the excess. I'm a big fan of washing the mini to help fill in any missed areas. I let that dry overnight. The next day. Honestly, this would be a great place to stop. But I'm gonna get a little dingusy with this one and highlight everything. I also got some new Series 33 brushes I was very excited to try out. A lot of this highlighting just used the original color mixed with either Rackarth Flesh, Model Color Buff, or White. You'll notice I'm a big fan of stippling for highlighting. It adds some nice texture as well as helps create a smooth transition. The armor was highlighted by taking the original armor color and mixing it with French Mirage Blue. Then highlighted further by mixing French Mirage Blue with buff. You can stipple around the edges to make it look like chips. I also dotted some black and made little cuts with French Mirage Blue mixed with even more buff. I was struggling a little bit to get paint off of the brush. I think I need to use more water than I'm used to, but that's what I get for using new brushes for the first time in a video. I highlighted the red armor bits with red mixed with white, and then tackled drawing on the mark of Nurgle onto his chest plate. I really needed to thin the paint more for this, but I'm actually very happy with how I did. I cleaned up the edges of the drawing with red. Luckily it's supposed to look sort of messily painted onto the armor. 
The green glowing eyes and light were done with flat green and worked up to basically white. I also painted on some OSL coming off of the light with a thin glaze of green, and then a brighter spot highlight of green closer to the light. I used Ethonian Camo Shade to wash the eyes in light. This cleans up the edges and makes them more defined. Finally, I edge highlighted the rim of the light. I highlighted the metallic bits with model color silver, and then added rust with typhus corrosion and riser rust. I sort of painted on the riser rust rather than dry brushing it. The extra pop of color really works well in my opinion. I added him to his base and he was done. I love how he turned out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave any feedback or questions in the comments below. Alright, bye bye.